All right, now we are going to be solving linear inequalities, which I personally think is probably easier. So just as a refresh, linear line. It just means we have an x. Quadratic means we have x squared. Linear means we just have x as our greatest, like exponent is 1. So an inequality is different from an equation because it can have infinite solutions rather than just like one or two. Um, and in this case, this inequality has a greater than sign. So inequalities just mean greater or less than. They technically mean, they mean in equal, so not equal. Greater than, less than, or greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. All right, so in order to solve, we are going to pretend basically in our head that this is an equal sign. The only difference is if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. That's the only difference. So in order to solve, we are going to pretend that that's an equal sign. And so we want to get x by itself. That's the goal. So we're first going to add 2. And we'll have x over 5 is greater than negative 1. And then in order to solve for x, x right now is being divided by 5. So we're going to multiply by 5 on both sides. We're multiplying, but it's by a positive number. So we do not have to flip the sign. So we have x is greater than negative 5. So in Alex, you can just write your solution just like this. Please note that you can also write it like this. Oops which I think is weirder to have the x on the right-hand side, but it's totally up to you. And it sounds super elementary, but just make sure that this crocodile is eating the correct thing if you do decide to like flip it at all. But I personally just like to have the variable on the left-hand side. All right, second example. Again, we are just going to pretend that this inequality is an equation. The only time that you have to do anything different is if we multiply or divide both sides by a negative, have to flip the sign. All right, so we're going to solve, and we'll first add 3 to both sides. So we'll have negative 12x is less than or equal to 48. Then we need to divide both sides by a negative 12. And since we're dividing both sides by a negative, we have to flip the sign. So it becomes a greater than or equal to negative 4. So x is greater than or equal to negative 4. All right, this last example is basically just a practice in some algebra. We're going to have the distributive property over here since there's parentheses. And then we do have a variable on both sides. So it's just a slightly more difficult algebraic exercise, but it's not too bad. So the first thing that we'll do is distribute the 2. And then the next thing that we want to do is get all of our x's onto the left-hand side. You could get them all onto the right-hand side if you wanted. I just prefer to have the variable on the left, but it's totally up to you. So we will have negative 6x minus 25 is greater than or equal to 6. And then if we add 25 to both sides... Oh, so close to having a nice final answer. But that's what happens when you make them up. All right, so we're dividing both sides by a negative number, so we do have to flip the sign. It becomes a less than or equal to negative 31 sixths. I cannot simplify that at all. And just a quick note, if you do have a quotient, right, a fraction, and one part, either the numerator or denominator, is negative, it just means the entire thing's negative. However, we don't like to write negative signs in a denominator as a final answer. You can either put them in front of the numerator or right outside the front of the fraction. So you could also have written this fraction like this instead, if you wanted to.